I knew at some point I would revisit a topic that I had covered already. Like, I would have learned something, look back, and go, hey, there's a much easier way to do that now. I didn't think it would happen so soon, but I really need to make this video now because I'm upset that Blender did something so unintuitive that I straight up thought it just didn't have what I needed it to do. I was going to write the script for the more advanced modeling video where we rigged a breakfast machine. I'm sitting on the footage as we speak, but I'm so upset by what I found that I just can't not make another video on rendering. Alright, remember when I said this? But even if you had a lossless file like ABI, it would upscale your footage, but you have no way to control the interpolation of how it's upscaled, so either way, your final output would still be blurry and muddled. Well, guess what? You can. There is a way to use Blender to upscale your animations, but the way that it does so is so hidden and so unexpected that there's no way you'd have been able to figure it out by yourself. In fact, I had to look it up too. So, let's get into it. I have an image sequence here in my video editor. Over here we can see that the source reads 320 by 240 It's being stretched to fit the 920 by 1080 resolution that we have. If we were to render it, it would get blurry, as I pointed out in the original video. Obviously, since it's such a small source, it will stretch it to fit the resolution that it's currently set to, and thus, blur it. Now, watch this. We go into the render tabs here, and we go to film, and here we have the setting that determines how sharp the final render will be. We set that to zero, and if we render it again, guess what? Nope, still nothing. I wouldn't lie to you. When I said you couldn't control the interpolation, I meant it. This is the first thing that I tried, and this was the result. I thought that it would at least have done something, but no, it doesn't do anything at all. So, after about an hour of tinkering and messing around with the settings, I thought, oh, okay, I guess there's just no way to fix that then. Better find a different answer, because obviously this ain't the way you're gonna get rid of the blurring, right? Case closed. Well, guess what? We're using the wrong render. Yeah, that's right, there's different rendering options we're supposed to be using. By default, when you render by hitting F12, or Control F12 to render our images and animations respectively, when you're editing videos, those buttons still work to render out our video, but if you go over here, click on the View drop-down, down here it says Sequencer Animation Render, and if we hit that, there it is. Our animation rendered it the way we wanted it to, without any stretching or any unwanted blurring. I facepalmed when this worked. Not because I overlooked it, but why would anyone think that this would be any different than the default rendering option? I don't know the difference between the two of them. I don't even know why it's not the default setting. Why wouldn't you use the video sequence renderer when you're using the video sequencer? So, problem solved, I guess. Don't use the default renderer when you're trying to edit a video. Use the video sequence renderer when you're trying to put it all together. And. With that, really, that's the end of the video. I don't really have a good outro for this one. It's so abrupt and so simple, it's clean cut. But I do want to thank Henry Gonzalez for asking the question. It did inspire me to look for a better answer than the one that I had had. The original method that I used to overcome this problem, depending on how big your animation is, could add hours to your work, like it did to my project when I made the Super Hot D-Make. I had plenty of different elements that I was juggling together and trying to upscale and make sure everything went together well. It just became a problem that I had to control every single time when I added something new. So, hopefully, that won't be a problem anymore. But before I go, I do want to give a bit of a gift. Kind of a, sorry I haven't gotten to the advanced modeling tutorial video yet. That one's next, I promise. But people were interested in character modeling also, and that's going to be a long time coming, to be sure. So. Here, I'm going to put in the description two fully rigged, low poly, basic human meshes. One of them's male, one of them's female. The male one was the one that I used during my super hot D make, actually. So, if you want to do character modeling and have fun or just play around with some models, have at it. I'm going to put them in the description and you can download them for free. And with that, that's the video. That's all I got. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy these tutorial videos. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments. I try to respond as quickly as I can. And check out the PS1 graphics subreddit. If you end up making anything following these tutorials, I want to see them. And with that, see everyone next time.